Good morning, America, and breaking news as we come on the air. Baseball legend David Ortiz, yes, Big Poppy, the victim of a brutal shooting. The shocking surveillance video, the future Hall of Famer shot at point blank range outside a nightclub. Big Poppy rushed into surgery, telling doctors, quote, don't let me die. Police calling it an ambush, the very latest on his condition this morning. Also this morning, deadly crane collapse. Winds topping 70 miles an hour sent this massive crane flying into a Dallas apartment building. Oh my God, the crane is falling over. Oh my God. Killing one person, injuring five. Well, another major storm hits the south. A motorcyclist killed in Florida when lightning strikes his helmet. The fast moving fire forced an evacuation at this popular California amusement park. Families running for safety, and now the new triple digit heat threat. Battleground rush. 19 of the Democrats running for president descend on Iowa making their pitch. But where was Joe Biden? Dramatic rescue. A boat with seven on board flipping over in the waters off New York City. A woman trapped and tangled in fishing gear, and the moment rescue crews swoop in to save her. A history making night at the Tonys. Broadway's biggest stars out in full force, and the winner doing something no one had ever done before. And the Toronto Raptors on the edge of glory. One win away from their first NBA title ever. But the Warriors saying, not so fast. Will Kevin Durant, KD, return tonight? Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. On the edge of glory could be a huge night for the Raptors. They could get their first ever NBA title. That would be, mm. that would be exciting mm -hmm. to see. But we're going to begin with that breaking news. David Ortiz, the Boston Red Sox legend, also known as Big Poppy, was ambushed at a club in the Dominican Republic last night. And we have the moment you've seen on this surveillance video. He helped the Red Sox to three World Series championships. He was rushed to surgery overnight. The suspect is now in custody. Fans, former teammates, everyone sending thoughts and prayers. Well wishes. Eva Pilgrim is here, has the latest for us. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, guys. David Ortiz was just sitting at a table chatting with a friend when out of nowhere, a man rushed into the crowded club, taking aim right at him. It's the brutal point blank shooting that brought baseball heavyweight David Ortiz inches from death, all captured on security camera. This morning, the three time World Series champion, widely known as Big Poppy, is recovering in a Dominican Republic hospital. The ambush happening at a nightclub in his hometown of Santa Domingo. Watch again as Ortiz, seen here, suddenly slumps over. ABC News learning he was shot once in the back, the bullet exiting through his abdomen. The suspect arrived by motorcycle before fleeing, but police say he didn't get far, taken into custody just outside the club. Overnight, Ortiz undergoing a successful surgery, but his injuries are serious. One of his doctors telling ESPN on the way to the operating room, the champ pleaded, don't let me die. I'm a good man. His father reassuring fans. Telling reporters, Big Poppy will be around for a long time. MLB's biggest stars tweeting in solidarity. Alex Rodriguez saying, anxiously waiting for more news. In the meantime, only prayers for David Ortiz. And Hall of Famer and fellow Boston Red Sox player Pedro Martinez getting emotional, writing, I'm at peace knowing you out of danger. Can't wait to hear your voice. The 43-year-old spent 20 seasons playing for the Boston Red Sox and was a fixture in the community. After the Boston Marathon bombing, he delivered this memorable speech. This jersey that we wear today, it doesn't say Red Sox, it say Boston. There's no word on a motive at this hour. The suspect is at police headquarters this morning being questioned by investigators. And police are actually crediting the crowd at that club for jumping into action. They captured and beat up the alleged gunman holding him until police arrived. Oh, wow. The footage is so chilling. Yeah. Okay, but thanks very much. We're going to move on now to that deadly crane collapse in Dallas. Severe winds slammed the crane into an apartment building, killing one, injuring five. ABC's Clayton Sandell is on the scene with the latest. Good morning, Clayton. Hey, good morning, George. You can see behind me here, police still have this entire area shut down. And I want to step back so you can see right behind me is that crane over the street there. The wreckage of that massive crane, it came toppling down onto that apartment building on the right side of your screen there slicing through this five-story complex. 
like a knife through butter. The terrifying moments after a giant construction crane slices through a Dallas apartment building. In this video, a woman watches in horror as the crane crashes down. No match for 70 mile per hour winds. Oh my God, the crane is falling over. Oh my God. In the building's parking garage, part of every single level collapsed. A mass of concrete and crushed cars piled on top of each other. The crane puncturing and shredding the building. At least one person was killed inside an apartment. Five others were injured, two of them critically. Rescuers rushing in, dogs at their sides, to search the rubble for survivors. The building itself has suffered uh, multiple collapses in different areas. The collapse coming as a severe storm is moving through the south. Winds knocking down this Dallas billboard. In Llano County, Texas, 75 people were rescued from a lake after their tour boat took on too much water. And this reported tornado damaging nearly 200 homes. In Lincolnton, officials say three people died after their car hydroplaned into a creek, submerging in six feet of water. And in Florida, a man riding a motorcycle was killed by a lightning strike. A highway patrol showing his helmet cracked and melted. The crane company says they are cooperating with this investigation. Officials say the good news is that everyone else who was in this building is now accounted for, but there's still no word yet on when or even if this building can be repaired. Michael. All right, thank you so much, Clayton. And now we're going to go out west where triple digit temperatures and high winds are fueling dangerous conditions. This wildfire getting dangerously close to an amusement park, forcing families to evacuate. That park is still closed this morning. ABC's Will Carr is there in Valencia, California with more. Good morning, Will. And Michael, so many families were here enjoying their weekend on the rides behind me when that fire broke out. This morning, you can still smell the smoke in the air here after a terrifying afternoon. Oh my God, this is so hot. On a scorching hot day, that fast moving fire erupted next to a packed amusement park. Watch families flee. The kids wipe their eyes and cough from the thick smoke blanketing the area. As fire crews race to the scene, you can see just how close those flames came to the water slides in Hurricane Harbor. At first, the park was evacuated. Some families ran to their cars. But with the flames bearing down, authorities quickly shut down the ramps to the nearby interstate and asked visitors to stay inside Magic Mountain while fire crews battled the brush fire. Buses were driving by, kids were covering their mouths, saying that they couldn't breathe and that they had asthma. With all the smoke and heat, at least nine people were rushed to the hospital. The smoke was blowing right down on the park, and we understand that a number of individuals complained of smoke inhalation. Certainly some scary moments for the families here. The good news is firefighters were able to jump on top of that fire quickly, and they're planning to reopen the park a little bit later this morning. Robin. Good to hear that, Will. Thank you. Got to go to Ginger now. And Ginger, there's a new threat from those triple digit temperatures out west. This is only the beginning of this heat, especially from Oregon to Arizona. We're talking about a large area that's going to be under this large ridge. So what it means to you, this is the Yolo County, California fire, the sand fire, more than 2,000 acres burned. San Francisco had a daily record, but they also had their warmest temperature in nearly two years. Then you go to Arizona, the Tonto National Forest just outside Phoenix, excessive heat warning in place now through Wednesday or even Thursday for some. So it's that big ridge in the jet stream that's keeping all the heat numbers today look like this 102 Fresno 99 Las Vegas 98 Medford and Phoenix today going to 107 George oh man okay Ginger thanks very much we're gonna move on now to the White House where President Trump has decided to postpone tariffs on Mexican imports after a last-minute deal to control migrants crossing our borders our senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega joins us now Cecilia the president touting this new deal and attacking critics who say it basically ratifies commitments Mexico's already made yeah, George, and critics say that this is mostly reaffirming prior commitments that Mexico, as you just said, already made. Uh, for example, take a look. Mexico agreed to increase the number of National Guard troops that it's sending to its southern border. But Mexico had already, agree already uh, agreed to send and committed to sending those troops there. Uh, the president also said that Mexico agreed to immediately begin buying agricultural, large quantities of agricultural products from American farmers, 
Even White House sources concede that that was just a verbal agreement, that there's no real teeth on that commitment from Mexico. Uh, the president's critics are saying that this is just another example, George, of him manufacturing a crisis and kind of swooping in to save the day. But the president is also saying if it doesn't work, tariffs could come back. Yeah, just this morning he said that tariffs will be reinstated, but it's a little confusing, I think, to a lot of observers here in Washington. He's saying that if Mexico doesn't agree to some secret, undisclosed elements to this plan, things that weren't released in this uh, joint declaration, but he's not saying, George, what this, these secret deals are. Cecilia Vega, thanks very much, Robin. And George, from the White House to the race for the White House now. 19 Democratic candidates descending on Iowa, making their pitch at a major political event on Sunday. But former Vice President Joe Biden was not there. He was attending his granddaughter's high school graduation. He and President Trump are heading to Iowa tomorrow for dueling appearances. Senior congressional correspondent Mary Bruce has more there on Capitol Hill. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Robin. Well, two weeks until the first debate, and the candidates are out on the trail in full force, honing their pitches and some of their attacks. Hey, guys. This morning in Iowa, Joe Biden is leading the pack and taking heat from his fellow Democrats. We will not defeat Donald Trump unless we bring excitement and energy into this campaign. The candidates taking subtle and not so subtle jabs at the early front runner and his recent flip flop on abortion funding. I don't think there is room in our party for a Democratic candidate who does not support women's full reproductive freedom. The latest Iowa poll shows Biden in the lead. In a tight race for second, Senators Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg, whose support has grown by double digits. <laughs> On the ground in Iowa this weekend, an all-out blitz. Thank you. 19 of the Democratic candidates swarming the Hawkeye State. In Cedar Rapids, a fundraiser turned into campaign speed dating. Each candidate with just five minutes to make their pitch. The only thing we can do is to look at that show that this president's created, whatever you want to call it, reality show, horror show, game show. Help me change the channel. And if they weren't quick enough, cue the music. On all of these issues, there's a common sense way forward. And let's build now, notably absent this weekend, Joe Biden. And here's why. Biden taking a break from the campaign trail to attend his granddaughter's graduation, an event that he says is so important that he would postpone an inaugural for it. But guys, this is not the first big campaign cattle call that Biden has missed. He's been taking a more low-key approach to campaigning, but he will be back out on the trail tomorrow in Iowa, and so will the president. Both of them will be there. All right, Mary, thank you. All right, family first. And now to the travel mess this morning. Nearly a 1,000 flights canceled because of problems with the plane's navigation system affecting several regional airlines. ABC senior transportation correspondent David Curley is joining us now from Reagan National Airport outside Washington. Good morning to you, David. Morning, Michael. Some of those flights that were canceled, the 1,000 were due to the weather, but hundreds were caused by this one single navigation system. Now, several of the regional carriers that fly the CRJ with a specific Rockwell Collins satellite navigation system were getting error messages, so they couldn't fly. No cause is actually known at this point. Investigators are looking at everything from a software update recently to solar flares, but the problem is not fixed. So today we are seeing hundreds of flights canceled again as these regional airlines got to keep their little aircraft on the ground until this satellite system is fixed. George? David Curley, thanks very much. Now to an amazing rescue. A hiker lost in the Arkansas wilderness for nearly a week was found this morning. We're seeing new images of the moment he was saved this morning and talking to him about what he survived. Janae Norman here with that story. Good morning, Janae. George, good morning. He is lucky to be alive, not only surviving six days in the wilderness, but there was heavy rain during that time. He was lost in treacherous terrain with deadly snakes and wildlife, unsure if anyone would ever find him. This morning, new video showing the treacherous search and rescue mission to save missing hiker Joshua McClatchy after six days alone in the Arkansas wilderness. Rescuers slowly pulling McClatchy down the steep slope in the dead of night. At one point, a rock falling, hitting him in the head and leaving a gash. Not just one miracle, it is hundreds of miracles. 
The Texas native setting out for a solo hike to celebrate his 38th birthday. That night, texting his mother, I'm dehydrated and getting low on water. I have bad reception and can't make calls. I've never thought I'd see anybody again. Task forces embarking on an urgent hunt until Friday night when a window of good weather allowed the National Guard to fly a helicopter with infrared technology. The pilot actually spotted uh, someone moving through the brush with the light. Unable to land the helicopter, rescuers on the ground sprinted for 45 minutes to get to him, a route that normally takes about three hours to hike. When they found me, they, they let me take a couple of sucks off a camelback. It was so refreshing. I had an IV before I made it down, so I was starting to feel considerably better. Crews managing to get him nearly three miles down the mountain to safety. This morning, McClatchy's family releasing these photos of their reunion, saying in part, Thank you. We can never repay you. You all were relentless, adding Joshua has been released from the hospital and is doing great. Remarkably, he escaped serious injury. Praise be to God, he is alive and well. So McClatchy had protein bars and water with him when he set out for the hike. He also had a filter straw that would allow him to drink water that may be unclean. So he was prepared for the hike. Still a scary situation, but a happy ending. Very. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. And now to the NBA Finals. Tonight, Toronto could take home their first ever basketball title if they can hold off the two-time defending champion Warriors. T.J. Holmes is in Toronto where it's all going down just hours from now. Good morning, T.J. Hey there, look, they are down three to one. So why in the world straight with the Warriors have a reason to be hopeful? Well, because of something that happened yesterday that hasn't happened in a month. Kevin Durant practice. We didn't have cameras in there when he was actually on the court, but Kevin Durant, their superstar forward, who was the finals MVP of their past two championships, he practiced for the first time in a month since he suffered that calf injury. There has been all kinds of questions surrounding his injury when he might come back, and now this is as close as he has gotten in the past month. He is seen as the one thing possibly that could save these undermanned warriors if he were able to come back and play tonight. He is listed as questionable, but this Strahan is as close as they They've gotten to thinking he could play possibly again. Well, they're going. They're going to need him. They're definitely going to need him. Thank you so much, TJ. Need everything they can get. I was well at home screaming. <laughs> you you know, the other day you were actually at the game. You screaming. Had you, yeah, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> you got to take the spend time with the commissioner too. Adam Silver mm -hmm. had a chance to spend some time with him. That was before Game Three there at Oracle. He has such a rapport with the players, with the owners, with the fans, and really appreciated the atmosphere and and being there. And TJ is a great date. You know, he hogs the popcorn. <laughs> Good thing he doesn't have his IFP and he can't hear me saying this, but it was wonderful to be there at the game and I really appreciate the commissioner inviting me but we'll see what happens tonight game I'll, five I'll be the, I'll be tuned in You're gonna be I, screaming again? I will be screaming again <laughs> it is tonight game five at 9 p.m. Eastern right here on ABC it's all, you think mm -hmm. KD's I think he, I think he's gonna play I think, right? KD, I think he's, he might he might I think Michael has some feelings about <laughs> it. <laughs> Keep it to myself, Julie. <laughs> okay. Following a lot of other headlines this morning, including this drama between actress Polly Perrette and her former NCIS co-star Mark Harmon, says she's terrified of him. Right now, I want to go back to Ginger. Yes, and I've got to start you out with a look at Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Yes, that has been rushing down and flash flooding. Oklahoma City, more than a foot above average. So it doesn't take a lot of rain to get this type of flash flooding. We're going to see that type of rain from North Carolina, South Carolina, up through the Mid-Atlantic and even the Northeast tonight night through tomorrow morning. So some of the heaviest stuff could come through with one to three inches. Just to give you a little warning, if you have any travel planned tonight through tomorrow in the Northeast, your local weather in 30 seconds. First, though, the select cities sponsored by Amazon Echo. OK, did you win? Alexa, pause my audiobook. Alexa, what time is it? It's 4.40 a.m. Alexa, turn on the backyard light. A little gray to start this work week, so have the umbrella out the door with some scattered showers, areas of drizzle, and a little cool easterly breeze. By lunchtime, 77 could have a few showers. It's not going to be raining all day long, but have the rain gear, even an isolated thunderstorm possible at 5 o'clock. High temperatures today in the low 80s. While you're sleeping, we will have heavy rain, but that should be out of here by about 4 a.m. Tomorrow morning, starting off cloudy, but then the sun comes out. Lower humidity and breezy winds with high temperatures right around 80 degrees.
So it's Monday, and I think this cat in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, feels a lot like a lot of us. Can't even get up to drink. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Just grabbing that water. <laughs> Happy Monday. It's working that's for him. One smelly cat, a lazy cat. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Darkness, For details in coming involving Volkswagen and the growing scandal. Dissatisfied customers filing complaints against the German automaker. Because a vision softly creeping.